Are you a fan of historical fiction? If so, have you ever wondered what makes some figures more relatable or believable than others? Welcome to Audiobook Reviews in 5. This is Yana, also known as Jana. And in today's slightly longer episode, I'm reviewing the Wolf Hall trilogy by Hilary Mantel, which includes Wolf Hall and Bring Up the Bodies, read by Simon Vance, and The Mirror and the Light, read by Joseph Klaska. The Wolf Hall trilogy took English writer Hilary Mantel more than 15 years to research and write, and these three books build on her lifetime of scholarship and exploration of narrative style. The trilogy covers the rise and fall of Thomas Cromwell in the court of Henry VIII, featuring Anne Boleyn, Thomas More, Jane Seymour, and other political and royal players from Tudor England. If you have not been listening or reading these books since they were first published in 2009, you'll be happy to know that the wait is over and the final title in the series, The Mirror and the Light, was published this year, if you feel like taking them all in at once. The Tudor period isn't exactly short on fictional and semi-fictional interpretations, so I can only imagine how challenging it must be to tell a story about this era in a new way. In recent tellings, before Mantell's work, Thomas Cromwell was assigned usually a role as a villain or a peripheral character, while Thomas More is famous as a heroic 60s liberal, to Mantell's incredulous eye, in the 1960 play A Man for All Seasons. Mantell has explained that although she didn't plan on turning Cromwell into a hero or even rehabilitating his image through her writing, she was so intrigued by his role in history that she wanted to uncover what drove him. Through her research and storytelling, Mantell reveals Thomas Cromwell as simultaneously enigmatic and utterly compelling, which is quite a feat to pull off successfully after more than 50 hours of listening or reading. So, the big question, how does Hilary Mantel achieve this? If you've seen the TV series adaptation, Wolf Hall, and you're wondering whether you should read or listen to Mantel's books, I will always recommend the books or the audiobooks over the show. And here's why. Although the TV series is entertaining, the books let us into the characters' heads, and we can identify with them in a way that just can't be matched in a movie or a TV show. One of the best examples I can think of that you might have read or heard of is Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. None of the film adaptations ever comes close, to me anyways, in conveying the poignancy of the characters in that novel. As readers of Frankenstein, we can focus on the complex humanity and the relatable thoughts and the feelings of Victor Frankenstein's creature. And the visual horror is only described, whereas film adaptations by their nature force us to focus on the visual ugliness and horror. And the main access we have to interiority or character development is limited by dialogue, physical acting, and maybe lighting. Bringing it back to Wolf Hall, for me, Cromwell's character is entirely constructed through his thoughts and feelings, which are almost always unspoken and unexpressed. While his interior life is fascinating, he presents to the world an image of almost extreme diplomacy, if that's possible, and restraint and tact. Even Hilary Mantel admits in interviews that Cromwell probably wouldn't have been interesting to meet since he wasn't known for his candor. And yet, in the trilogy, Cromwell occasionally speaks more candidly, notably at the beheading of Anne Boleyn, where, quote, usually he is the soul of courtesy. But if you cannot speak truth at a beheading, where can you speak it? Unquote. Cromwell also fits with our popular ideas of success. 
He is a rare example of what we might call a self-made man in the Tudor era of hereditary titles and aristocracy. Cromwell is a brewer's son who, through his own grit and grasp on political and personal dynamics, rises to the highest possible position of power in the court of Henry VIII. And for all his stealth, restraint, and diplomacy, Cromwell is still an incredible risk taker. After all, with King Henry, you never know if a decisive action will land you a new title of Great Chamberlain or imprisonment and beheading. Incidentally, all three of these were unfortunately bestowed upon Cromwell by the king in 1540. Now, what makes Cromwell and indeed this era feel so familiar to readers and listeners is Mantell's use of present tense and plain language. This is much more deliberate than it first might seem, since Mantell still uses some older forms of English expression and sentence construction, but she does this sparingly and sometimes strategically. For example, having characters refer to themselves in the royal we in conversation simply to illustrate power dynamics. I also loved the material history that Mantell highlights, including details about food and clothing, painting styles, and medical techniques. A note about the narration. Simon Vance is renowned as a narrator and needs no introduction, so I was surprised to see that relative unknown English actor Joseph Kloska narrates the third title, The Mirror and the Light, and the audiobook has been adapted into 30-minute episodes for a total of 12 hours of listening. I'm not sure what the content differences might be between the printed version and the audiobook, but I found the listening experience was comparable to the first two titles, and I enjoyed it so much that I listened to nearly the entire book a second time. If you're ready to dive into complex character exploration and a particularly fascinating and turbulent time in English history, this trilogy is an incredible listen. You can't beat Mantel's spellbinding storytelling, so check it out. That's all for this episode of Audiobook Reviews in 5. Thanks for listening. If you have not yet done so, please subscribe to Audiobook Reviews in 5 on your favorite platform. By subscribing, you help increase the profile of this podcast and chances of other listeners finding it. I look forward to checking in with you all again soon. Please stay safe and be well. 